Welcome to Mathematica for Biologists, Chapter 2, Part 2. We're going to look at opening up some data and do an arbitrary curve, like a nonlinear curve, for which we know the equation, and then fit our data to that equation and find an R-squared value, for example, for that fit. So here's an example that we're going to do, just this nonlinear fit, um, with an intercept here on the x-axis. So that function we'll call fun happens to equal a times b take away a times x put some parentheses around this divided by a times b b plus x so that's our function and to make an example plot of it. We're going to substitute into those values because we want to keep the function in symbolic form, so we're going to use substitutions where we'll just say a is 0.2, b is 10, that's our x-intercept by the way, and we'll make a test function using our substitutions. So we, we could, of course, explicitly define A and B as variables, but then we couldn't solve this thing algebraically. So we want to keep everything as in symbolic form and just do the substitutions trick. So slash dot means substitute our function in with the substitutions. And then what that looks like is this. So we can plot that out, plot our test function. And it's a function of x, so we'll make x go from 0 to our intercept, which happens to be 10. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that is the function that, um, that we're going to fit to. So what we're going to first do, just for demo purposes, is make some simulated uh, random data that's supposed to obey that function. And then we're going to fit this equation to that function as if we didn't know what A and B were. And so we'd basically be solving for A and B. So first we're going to simulate those data. So um, we'll make data points. Let's say there's 20 data points. <coughs> and we'll add some noise and it'll become clear what this means in a second. We're just going to add some random noise <coughs> to simulate the fact that we've collected for example biological data that has real noise <coughs> and we're going to try to fit our curve despite the noise. So we'll just make some random x values using a table function. So we'll say function within a function random real double square brackets and pick a random number let's say between 0 and 6 just as an example and we'll do this a number of times as we want in our data points so that's going to give us a table of random randomly selected x values so I can run this as many times as I want, get different values. Um, now we want y values that obey this function here, just to simulate our random, our, 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 our data. So we'll do a table again, and then we'll substitute our test function with these random x values. So x becomes random x for that iteration, for each iteration up to n data points. So what we've done is for each element of the table, we take our test function, which again, remember, looks like this. So we know what the values are except for x. And then we substitute in an x using a slash dot arrow and that random x value at that 
iteration. So then y looks like this down here. And so <clears throat> now what we're going to do is put those, collect those together in xy pairs um, by using this neat function called thread. Um, so we're going to thread. I'm going to call this raw xy because it's not the final xy that we want just yet. So we're going to thread together random x, x values, and random y, and then y values. And then there'll be xy pairs. And then we can plot those, for example, list plot raw xy. So there we go. And you can see it perfectly obeying our function. But that's not exactly what we want, because if we try to fit that, we'll just get an exact fit. We want to simulate some noise in our data. So let me get rid of this. Instead, we're going to modify this and say random y. y equals table again. And now what we're going to do is for each iteration of y, each element of y, we're going to add some noise to it, some random noise. So random real number that goes between positive and negative are noise. So this is literally just adding a random number between negative 0 0.2 and positive 0 0.2 to whatever value of y. That's just to simulate biological data, which is always noisy. So we do this for all. And then let's use our thread command again. So we'll call this xy equals thread random x and random y. And then we'll plot that. And hopefully you'll see this uh, nice noise. And we kind of can imagine a curve going down there. So imagine if we're biologists, I'm going to make the noise a little bit less so it's more clear. So for biologists, we've collected these data and we want to test whether or not these data are obeying or, or, or can be described by this function. And then what we want to do is find these coefficients, these A and B coefficients that we don't know from our data. So how do we do that? We use a fit. So let's do that down here. So we start our fit just by defining a new variable I'll call fit equals, and we'll use the find fit function. This is a neat function because it doesn't care the shape of the function can be linear or nonlinear. So we put in our xy data, and then the function that we want to fit, remember, that function is at the top this function we want to fit and find our coefficients a and b. So um, in brackets, curly brackets, we put the coefficients that we want to solve for. And then comma, the last variable is our um, independent variable, which is x. So that's going to find the fit, and it solved it. a is, is this value, and b is this value. And to plot that, all we would need to do, I'm going to do that again, to plot the, that function, or the, the actual best fit line through that, all we'd have to do is um, fit fun equals fun function and substitute into it our fit. what that looks like. And so if we wanted to plot that, fit fun as x goes from 0 to our proposed intercept, and that's what the best fit line looks like. Okay, so let me get rid of that. Still, we haven't, we're not all the way finished. We want to know how well our fit is. 
so we can do an r squared. Um, so r squared equals, and we're going to use this other um, fit function called nonlinear function model fit. That's the function. Um, this model um, is a little weird, this function, how it works, but what it'll do is it can back out arbitrary, arbitrary things. For example, r squared or other aspects of the fit. So we set it up the same way as we set up other function, using the same variables that we want to solve for. And with respect x, and then this is what that's going to look like. It's going to give us the same kind of things, but we want to back out from it r squared. And the way to do that is just a pair of square brackets, and in quotes you say r squared. r squared is 0.986, which is really, really good. Okay, so just to summarize, we have our fit values. We solved for our coefficients a and for b. And then uh, let's make some nice summary plots of that. So we'll say graph 1 equals the plot of our original function with the fit substituted into it those values that we solved for, um, going from x equals 0 to our intercept. And actually, I forgot to do something. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to pull our intercept value, this is this b value, out of our fit. So the way to do that is just use the slash dot command. So let's call this b, or let's call it intercept. That's the, that's the b value that we wanted. So b slash dot fit. So that just extracts this 12 out of this complicated output. That's the way to do it. What you want and then slash dot and then your substitution. Okay, so we have our intercept, so that's one plot. And then another plot to where we have original data. X, Y. And then the third thing is we can just overlay them by using the show command. Graph 1, graph 2. And so we see our original, this is the um, best fit line. These are the original random data, as if it was biology data. And then here's the best fit line going through those data.